noises. Who's this? An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This is directly above the central furnace in the cellar. The voices probably come from here. But another thing to do, nothing happens. Still nothing. No one's home. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. There must be an way to wake up whoever's in there. Maybe we should ask the lady in the bookstore what's going on here. Is somebody is in here? Gee. What's this? Postcard, La Delta 51. Sometimes, it's necessary to resort to extreme measures. I suppose it's all over now. Her shoulders slump, as if a heavy burden lies on them. I guess there's no escape. What are you talking about? It's just a door. Just a door? This place is cursed, detective. They uncovered the doomed commercial area for nothing. Just look at the sheer amount of companies that have failed in this house. I hope you're happy now. Happy that you've ruined everything. Now that you've broken the door, the curse is coming to get me as well. She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Hushed Almighty, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the door. Blessed be your name. Oh, sorry, I didn't know about the curse. Of course you didn't. You're nothing but a policeman. She shrugs, visibly dejected. Alright, you know what? I'm going to let you investigate the Doom commercial area. We are set on the path. There's little else to do. Her facade, her facade has dropped. Now you see the curiosity behind the fear. But before we go on, tell me. Did you encounter the malignant entity? Her eyes narrow as she whispers the name. Of course, the entity. I didn't see her. But I sense her presence. You did? She gasps. Then has been. It, then it has been true. What the? Then it has been true. What? It has to be true. It's missing something here. I suspected that this woman-shaped energy must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you see that she lives inside the chimney? chimney. The passage between heaven and hell. Of course, it all makes sense now. Yes, the chimney is part of the building's central furnace and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. She shivers. Should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. And do return to me after you've talked to it. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. If you're really interested in cracking this mystery, then we should go back to the furnace. And you could maybe you can yell into it or something, make some noise. You think of something you always do. Despite his cool, the lieutenant's interest in solving this mystery too. <laughs> okay, I had a few more questions about the curse. Okay, but please, only a few questions. She peers at the curtains. You wouldn't want to disturb the spirits. 
how does this curse manifest itself? A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around in a dimly lit store. The curse is so much worse than you can imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. Her voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin, and her bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't, didn't the curtain just move? Wait, that's it? I was hoping for something more paranatural. But officer, there's nothing natural about the entire company's declaring bankruptcy. I'm talking about kaku demons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. Strange. I feel unwanted too. What does it mean? Truly so? Her eyes narrow as she tries to get a read on your energy. Perhaps the dark energy is leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. Why didn't you tell me right away? It's the curse. It's not good to talk about the curse. Not in detail. The negativism. She shivers. It's dangerous. Talking about the void rate angers them. Wow. Void rates. You have new words. Such rape may prove a formidable enemy. Suit up. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous fire physiological and even a pair of some seminist meditators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage-like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wars as well? Oh, this? She holds the pendant in her palm. Its ochre heart glistens in the lights. Uh, no, it's special. Himean amulet blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast through the store. Had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. Inducement? Inducement. She nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert Pygmy Shamans? That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Doesn't seem like the spell is working. There are no customers around except you. There are hardly any customers in the store. Do you think it's really working? She nudges her spectacles. Sir? I'm well educated in the commercial and esoteric arts. I know what to do and what to avoid. <laughs> hmm, have you ever thought about a sale? Maybe this could lure in some customers. Discount my wares? I can see, sir, that you don't value books very highly. Besides, this will only tempt the phantoms of doom. They can sense the desperation, you know. <laughs> what about the words in the back door? Are these seminists as well? Yes, the seminists are very crafty and their words are extremely powerful. This award simply won't do here. Uh, never mind, I had other questions. Alright, let's leave. Hmm. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally and now we know your copy type. Wait. They are couple types? Yes. Guess what's yours? Cool cop? No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. <laughs> uh, won't the other cop types be jealous? What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can do copy type from sword to anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, wait. This is better. Fucking. They should be sorry. Yes, yes. Impotent rage and lamentation. Let's wrap it up. I'm sorry. Of course you are. 
it's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info, or maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. That won't happen. <laughs> Jesus. Regular self critique. Alright, back in here. Investigate the current. Hello! Pfft, what the fuck? Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes through the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly ceases. Then, you hear a woman's voice answer. You've awakened the entity. This is the remote viewers division. Identify yourself. hear a low rumble upstairs, the sound of a curtain being put in aside. The tear knocks and points upstairs. After you, officer. <laughs> that bell, Jesus. Hello! woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my millions. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Hold on, what do you mean by Milius? Yes, a milieu is like a calling station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I have a knock on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the side entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? As she speaks, her bone like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light. But her hands strong. Role playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident? Does that count? Mm. <laughs> no, I was looking for something else. Answers. Answers? How strange. These days people only come to me for dice and role playing games. I'm not sure how helpful I'll be, but go ahead and ask. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks like as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shelves like a stalagmites. This person means you or no one else, absolutely no harm. She will answer freely and honestly. No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. That's what you need. Hmm. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the wedding in rags? Nothing really, I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? You might be dealing with a malignant entity here. The looks at his notebook 
than the woman in the large window. Your window looks directly into the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by daily ruckus? Oh, there's always something going on in the whirling backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids, and lately I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sire. She's not sorry to disappoint you. Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. She looks up at the window. Pale light comes in. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes over the work to look out of the window? I might have, she admits. But in this case, all I could have seen would have been my own reflection standing back from the darkness. It's light here, but dark in the yard at night. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I really get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. This person value focus above all. She keeps her sharp sight on the instrument before her. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it. And I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thanks for your answer. She nods. Anything else, officer? Hey, where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black suit here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Placence was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Creative, the lieutenant looks around in the spacious room, his ceiling fading into the shadows above. When she arrives here, there was no room anywhere else. She must have known the other businesses. I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, she nods, as the wind howls in from the foreign shaft above. But I don't think these stories are true. Wait, how do you explain what happened to all those companies then? It's just capitalism, she shrugs. You only hear about tales of success. So it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Pleasance is the one who sent me. She is convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Pleasance at the bookshop, lady. She raises her brows. I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? The curse is just binding its time before it strikes again. Sooner or later, everyone will fail. Even her. Alright? But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Mm. <laughs> no, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitress just took off and customers have, have trouble paying bills. And then there's me, she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered from knives to carving flies to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea yet somehow has survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? It's because she's in cahoots with the demons. Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to woo the curse? Hmm. The curse will get you. I have no doubt about it. It just doesn't care about earthly time frames. The dice maker erupted in and laughter. Is that what you think, officer? That the, cur the curse is real. The jig is up. The she demon know you've uncovered her true identity. Time has come to face the source. 
Fear not for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. <laughs> that guy is very mysterious. <laughs> I think it still might be you that's causing this. Hmm, so I'm the grand dragon in the cave. She seems mildly entertained by this suggestion. May I ask what supports this claim? There's something ghostly about you. Ethereal even. Ethereal? She throws her head back and laughs. Thank you, but I think it's just the lightning. No, it's the troubled color of her energetic vibrations. No, I mean it. Your energetic vibrations are off. I sense tragedies in your past, darling. Of course you do. She listens to your antics with a forbearing smile on her face. Show me a person in Martinez who doesn't have any tragedies in their past and then we'll talk. If you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies and the curse, then let me know. She turned back to her work. That's all she has to say on the subject. She has been thorough and truthful as far as we, as far as we can see. Prisons needs to hear about this. Perhaps if we combine your physical energies, you'll become sense... You'll make sense of the situation. Hmm. Why hasn't her business failed? Uh, you feel nothing. We haven't taken some comfortable warm in here. <laughs> Start picking up clothes. <laughs> you need to connect. <laughs> Excuse me, what are you doing? The nice baker stares at you while you start to fuss with your pants. <laughs> Officer, the lieutenant exclaims sharply. <laughs> it's part of this special technique I have. The zipper! It's stuck! Oh no, not the zipper! She rolls over to the other end of her table with her chair, looking for something to grab from the toolbox. <laughs> A tool to get the zipper open? Is it, me is it just me or is it hot in here? No, I don't feel hot. We're in Delta smokestack, if anything, then it's cold here. It's part of the special technique I have. She squints at you, a little astonished at what she's hearing. And what technique is that? You still haven't gotten your super open. <laughs> okay, hear me out. Sometimes I get these feelings. Miss, I apologize for my colleague's behavior. He's still recovering from an unusual medical episode. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Officer, this isn't how mature adults deal with their feelings. <clears throat> oh shit. Now you feel something, that cold damp of shame washing over you. No, not like that. It's like I can feel the wind, or I don't know, the air pressure, and then the air tells me things. The air pressure told you to take your pants off in my studio? <laughs> this is not going very well, is it, work-wise? Yes, exactly. Can you please employ this special technique somewhere else? I work here and my work requires concentration. Half-naked people don't help with that. It turns away so that you can zip up your pants again. <laughs> oh man. Do you know what happened to the other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. She adjusts her yellow scarf that covers her hair. Are you interested in anyone speci specific? Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. Rats scuttle in the dark rooms under the banded blow dryers and dusty mannequin cobwebs cover rotors and radio computers alike. So much failure. There used to be a hair salon next to the bookstore, right? Yes. I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. There weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. It's not about the haircut, it's about the confidence. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customer should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the headscarf. Uh, 
what happened to the gym downstairs? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemi Tips Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at risk youths away from drugs and crime. And who is Artemi Tip? A kind man from Ziemsk. He had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start a gym as his way of giving back. Maybe that's what Kuno needs. A community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Her eyes narrow in the dim light. Who's Kuno? <laughs> He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth. Yes, yeah, I heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out the window. It's hardly quiet here at the moment. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. How did the community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that a punchy bank downstairs was full of... <coughs> excuse me. Full of amphetamines. You should have known it. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the con coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. Well, what's up with all the debris in the hallway? So many broken window panes. Oh, this one's a mess, she says. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milias. Who would have guessed it? Hmm, what's a snuff media? Trust me, you don't want to know. And they never clean up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool. Very cool about debris, but what's a snuff media? It's a sub rosa radio station that broadcasts real murderers with real victims. What the fuck? Some people pay good money to get off on it. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that. As if it's just another piece of information to lay out for our world. What does she mean, to get off on it? Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with it unlistened sub -rosa. The lieutenant turns to you. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching these perpetrators. Then she lets the thought go. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw a lot of mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the Daxon Hermes? No, he mostly just did drugs. <laughs> but what drugs exactly? I need to know what drugs he was doing for my police report. He got high on some weird taxidermy chemicals. Wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Even you can probably do better than that. You can almost see it. A small, sickly old man hunched behind his work desk. His pants stained with old piss, stuffing a sad, stiff legged raccoon dog. The entire scene looked tragic, Jesus. <laughs> I noticed mannequins. Creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? What in the name of. Mm hmm? The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently, chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I'm glad that someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. Hmm, really? She looks at the window still where a dead fly is lying on his back. Legs curl up in bow tie. <laughs> anyway. Poor guy. 
suddenly get the feeling that insects are important in the case somehow. It's hard to say why. What's the deal with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, the chief exec executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She raised her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmission from Tuo or Teomotiri or Kashtkor or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? The usual, I imagine, that he's been thinking of all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. The man is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All the remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in Fort 7. I have no idea why those keys and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They were just props. Why well, return to them? Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No wait, forget it. it. Would take too long. I saw a strange machine next to the blackboard in the main room. Fortress accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role playing systems every now and then. Once I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious things. The mind is the drawing board of history. They certainly took their work very seriously. Anyway, they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedule. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran off money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I didn't hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individual on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know how the market are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just get, just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. She's right, showing up to work on time is important. Showing up to work on time is hard. No scratch that, showing up to work at all is difficult. Especially if you've been drinking. Well, showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. And so is producing something extraordinary. Her eyes wander to the shelves full of die prototypes and discarded models. Something strain, strains her face before she looks up again. Anything else? There was an ice cream company with a terrifying taxidermy bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the favorite Ravenhoe Ice City. We're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees, like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather inno innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed. What were the other ideas? Alright. What about the other ideas? There was really just one, and both picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cent per hour to mend the boot. And by mend the boot, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. She leans back disapproving. Sounds like she really didn't like those girls. Sounds like she really doesn't know how to be a female ally. <laughs> Fritz does the same thing. I know a girl just like that. She works in Fritz as a cashier, she's not particularly friendly. Employing sulky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. Talking about acne ridden girlfriends and gorilla like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravenhoe Ice City. And they already had the bear. She closed her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? 
The bear, she repeats, pressing thumbs into her temple, temple, like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out? Of course not. A bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matter worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravenhall Icy lost the prize war to its rival, Glaze 5000. Glaze 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents apiece out of regular fridge. <laughs> the bear was scary. Every time I saw that bear, I felt scared. Like it would become alive any moment now. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherion. What the fuck? <laughs> Sounds cool. Scary, but cool. Megatherion? Megatherion, not the dice maker. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. Maybe this wise and noble beast can guide you towards those amphetamines you've been craving. <laughs> the horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. Hey, do you think the vision beast could guide me towards some amphetamines? I don't, officer. You should stay away from drugs and vision beasts. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad, finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the afternoon air. Her eyes followed idly. Little sparkling embers under the window. Outside, it's light. Light scatters from the low hanging cloud cover. There's always the treat of snow. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it seems like most of the doorbells are not working. Oh, right. She rips her forehead. Her scarf has left a thin line on her dusty skin. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. So you're telling me that you have a doorbell there? Which one? The one with the name to name card is the last one in the list. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. Hmm, I have more questions about the building. Hmm, the intercom, nope. Alright, done. Actually, other questions. Okay, I'd like to order a die from you. Of course, she knows this is what she's here for. Tell me what you have in mind. Do you know the Wirral Unnethered setting? No one will die for that. Ah, yes. Fortress accident. She shakes her head lightly. It's too bad they never finished their game. The Wirral Unnethered die is a variation of a standard role playing die, only instead of plants, it uses motives of ice and death and loss, of course. Ice, death, loss. Sounds like you. I'm thinking something made from alligator jaw bone cast in black resins. The reptile bones is as white as ice and death as well. Death, she smiles. For seven real, I could have it ready in eight hours. Hmm. It's a deal. Great. See you in eight hours then. She takes a small notebook from her table and writes something down. Is there something else? Nope. 